What's up everybody, I'm Maverick and today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about how to set up a green screen for your Twitch stream. Using a green screen is awesome, but I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. You can make your Twitch stream visually stand out much better with a great overlay and a normal webcam set up with a decorated room and maybe some colored lights. These days it's so easy to find a beautiful overlay for free that there's just no need to default to using a green screen. I'm not saying you shouldn't use one, I'm just saying you need to know why you plan to use one. I'd recommend a green screen only in very specific situations. If your room is too small or just isn't well suited for a normal webcam setup, then using a green screen makes a lot of sense. If you are really set on having a minimalistic overlay, it doesn't get any cleaner than using a green screen. Or for me, the best reason to use one is for all the creative things you can do with it. An easy example of this is to look at Dr. Disrespect and everything he does with his green screen. He sets up custom backgrounds, foregrounds, and even interactive elements. Stuff like this is the main reason why I use a green screen. And in my opinion, if you're not planning on doing anything creative or interesting with it, you should think hard about whether or not this is the right move for you. All right, so you've decided to definitely go with a green screen. What kind should you get? Well, there's a lot of options available to you. The easiest and overall best option, albeit the priciest, would be to go with the Elgato green screen. At $150, it's the easiest to set up, the fastest to take down, takes up almost no space at all, will never have any wrinkles, and looks great. Aside from the price, it really only has two downsides, both of which might not even be relevant to you, depending on your needs. First, it's made of a slightly too reflective material, which will reflect green light back onto your body, potentially making it easy to accidentally remove a little of your body from the screen, or making it difficult to remove the green outline from your silhouette. This isn't a huge problem, and if you're using a high quality camera like a DSLR, you might not have any issues at all. But if you're using a more basic webcam like a C920, you might find you have to do a lot of tweaking to get it to look right. And it'll be very sensitive to any changes in your lighting setup, which may be a little high maintenance to some people. Second, you might not like the width of the screen. I don't think most people would have an issue with this, but unless you put the screen within inches of your back, you're not going to be able to use this screen without cropping your camera somewhat. It's also not tall enough for most people to comfortably stand in front of, locking you into the sitting position. In my opinion, neither of these issues are big enough for most of you to worry about, and the pros definitely outweigh these minor cons. It's well worth the $150 price tag, and I can recommend this one in a heartbeat, full stop. If this one doesn't work for you, for whatever reason, there's still several more options. Similar to the Elgato green screen would be a collapsible backdrop that you can hang from the ceiling or strap to your chair's backrest, or lean against the wall or something like that. They might be slightly more difficult to set up and might be a bigger pain to deal with overall, but if price is an important factor and you're willing to sacrifice some of the convenience, this might be an acceptable alternative. The third option is the one I go with, which is to get a proper chroma key sheet and rig it up somehow. You can pin it to the wall or hang it from the ceiling or put it on a couple tripod stands and rig it up that way. Depending on how you do it, this option can have some of the best pros and worst cons. If you use tripod stands, this is a setup that can take up a lot of space in your room and can be a big headache to put up and take down, which means you probably won't want to do it before and after every stream. Meanwhile, if you put it on the wall, this is a great option as it takes up virtually no space, but obviously it will feel like a permanent fixture in your room, which you might not like. The biggest pro of going this route, and the reason I use it personally, is because you can potentially go big with the green screen. And not only will you not need to crop, but if you go extra big, you might even be able to get up and walk around in front of your green screen. If you go this route, I recommend you buy the biggest green screen possible, as even if you don't use it all, it's easy enough to fold back the excess. And if you ever want to expand it in the future, you won't need to buy a new sheet. You could also paint your walls green using a proper chroma key paint. This is one of the nicest options as not only will you not have to maintain it or dismantle it every stream, but you're not gonna have to deal with wrinkles either. Uh, and the size of your green screen is really only limited by the size of your walls, but this is the most permanent and extreme of options, which 
probably isn't going to work for most of you. Now briefly, let's talk about some DIY options. There's some people out there who might want to buy some poster board or a random green sheet and rig something up themselves. This is totally doable, and for some people on a really tight budget, this might be right for them. However, there are too many variables to give any reliable advice on all the difficulties you might go through, so let me just say this. A proper green screen will light evenly, won't reflect much light back onto you, and is going to be a lot easier to deal with than most DIY options. And given that a proper green screen can be had for as little as $20, it's hard to recommend this option to you unless your situation is very specific. When it comes to lights, you have several options. The simplest option is to go with a few quality soft boxes and then put two in front of you and one or two behind you lighting the green screen itself. You can go with umbrella lights too, or LEDs or anything else if they're properly diffused but the end goal is to get a soft, even light and minimize shadows. If the lighting on your screen is uneven, it will be very difficult to chroma it out without artifacts, shadows, or other issues. My best advice to light your green screen is to light for yourself first to make sure you look as good as possible and not under or overexposed, and then light for your green screen afterwards. If you get really big, nice lights, you can usually use the same lights that are on your face to do some of the work for your green screen, which will mean you'll need fewer lights on the screen itself. I like to use umbrella lights on my face as I tend to find they're less harsh and distracting while I'm gaming, but whatever you use, you'll get used to it, so don't worry about it too much. Your camera settings are going to vary based on what webcam you're using, but since the most popular webcam for streamers is the Logitech C920, that's what I'm gonna talk you guys through now. Most other webcams are gonna have similar settings anyway, so even if they vary a little bit, this guide should help you kind of get your way. Before you start messing with your camera settings, make sure you're lit how you want to be for when you stream. Going forward, your lights, camera settings, and OBS settings must always be consistent or you risk throwing off your chroma key. My advice is to mostly leave brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness alone or to only make slight tweaks to them as needed. If you need to make these kinds of tweaks, I'd actually recommend you do it in OBS later and mostly set up your camera to get the clearest picture and leave your camera settings alone otherwise. White balance is important to get right so that you're not too blue or orange and you wanna make sure that your green screen is as bright and distinct a color as possible. If you go too cool or too warm, sometimes the green screen can actually blend in with your clothing more than you'd like, making it harder to chroma out. Leave your focus disabled. It looks very amateurish and distracting to have your camera unfocusing and refocusing all the time while you stream, so just set it up for the proper distance and leave it be. Exposure and gain are the most important settings for your webcam. Your goal is to get your exposure right so that you can use as little gain as possible. Too much exposure can slow your webcam down a lot, while too much gain can turn it into a grainy mess. I start off by turning my gain all the way down adjusting my exposure to a point that seems decent without making the camera lag, and then adjusting the gain minimally until it looks good. If you're using a DSLR as a webcam, you're going to have a much easier time as your camera will deal with light and color better, but otherwise these principles remain the same. Find the right aperture for your lens and increase the ISO as needed without making it too grainy. Keep in mind there's a give and take between your camera settings and your OBS settings, so once you go into OBS, you might have to come back into your camera settings and make some tweaks but this is a good starting point. Once you've got your webcam in order, go into OBS, open up a chroma key filter, and let's tweak the settings. If you're using Streamlabs OBS, the settings are going to be pretty much identical. You've got two options right off the bat under key color type. You can either use the default of green, or you can use custom and use a very specific shade of green directly from your green screen. I'd recommend using green by default, and if you can't get it to look good, then take a screenshot of your green screen in OBS, drop it in Photoshop or a similar program, pick a pixel, and use that color information instead. The problem with doing this right off the bat is if your green screen isn't lit perfectly evenly, doing it this way can lead to some problems. Experiment and figure out what's right for you. Next, turn similarity and smoothness all the way down and pretty much leave everything else alone. Now turn up the similarity until the green screen mostly vanishes, but leave a little green line around your body. Then turn up the smoothness until all the green vanishes. There's no specific settings anyone can give you that you can simply copy and paste. 
you're going to have to do a bit of work here to tweak it to the right levels. If as you're adjusting your similarity, your body starts vanishing before your green screen fully has, this is most likely a problem with your lighting not being even enough. Sometimes moving your lights further away from the green screen can lessen its intensity, so try that. If that doesn't work, go into your camera settings and make sure you're not too bright or too dark. If no matter what you do, you just can't get rid of the green outline, especially in your hair, you can adjust the key color spill reduction upward, which will take the color out of the green screen and turn it gray. Be very careful with this though, as too much will take the color out of you as well and can very easily make you look off or even sickly. You do not need a perfectly smooth green screen to have it look good. My green screen is filled with wrinkles and yet it comes out looking really great. My secret is to just add a little bit more light, which helps smooth out those shadows and it looks great from there. If you have a good camera like a DSLR, this can really help make things easier as well. The more distance between you and your green screen, the easier it will be to light it, avoid shadows on the green screen, and avoid green light from reflecting onto your body. I recommend a minimum of a couple of feet, but the more the better. You can get a really decent look, even if your green screen is very close, but it's more difficult and usually requires better gear to look perfect, such as a good DSLR camera. Instead of worrying about contrast, brightness, gamma, and saturation in your webcam settings or in your OBS chroma key filter settings, try this. Create a full screen scene in OBS and get it lit perfectly and set up your chroma settings to get the green screen to vanish. Then create a new scene and import your first scene into it as a source. Then put a color correction filter over the whole scene and adjust as necessary. Doing it this way will let you adjust the color of your person perfectly without affecting your chroma work. This should go without saying, but don't wear green while using a green screen unless you want your body to be partially invisible. You could do cool stuff with this in theory, but do it intentionally. Alternate between an all white and all black background while you're working with your settings to make sure all the green and shadows are out of your chroma key. If you can't get it perfect, often the moving background of your game will conceal a lot of this and make it invisible. All right, y'all, I hope this video helped you set up your green screen. If it did, hit the like button to let me know. Also, I plan on doing a whole series of these kinds of videos where I talk about the more technical aspects of how to set up your stream. If you're interested in those, subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. Also, if there's anything I didn't cover, leave a comment down below. I stream Monday through Friday, noon to 6 Eastern on Twitch. So if you want to come hang out with me there, ask questions, do so. And I'll see you guys there. Until next time.